Welcome on board the news track. I'm Rahul Kamal. Who's responsible for trying to disturb the peace of Punjab? And is the Bhagwant Man government competent to try and quell these attempts at disturbance? Supreme Court asked the center to clear a stand on the sedition law by tomorrow. Top court wants to know if the law will be kept in abeyance for pending and future cases. This after the Modi government says it will re-examine the colonial law. Saffron Group demands Kutub Minar's name be changed to Vishnu's thumb. BJP wants Mughal names of roads in the capital to be purged. Speaker showdown in Karnataka escalates. The Bomai government sets a 15 day deadline for religious places to comply with noise limits. Sri Lanka descends deeper into chaos. Reports suggest that the former Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapakse has fled the island nation. Shoot at sight orders issued to quell protesters. Santur Maestro Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharma passes away at the age of 84 because of a cardiac arrest. Prime Minister Modi joins the nation in mourning the loss, says the cultural world is poorer with his demise. India's top investigative agency, the NIA, will be sending a team to investigate how a rockel propelled grenade was launched at the Punjab Police Intelligence Headquarters in Mohali. Intelligence agencies are suggesting a Khalistani Park ISI link to the attack. The RPG attack comes just three days after four Khalistani terrorists were arrested in Karnal. Is there a plot to disturb peace in the border state? And who's responsible for this? Punjab grappling with a sudden surge in terror-related incidents. The state on high alert after an attack on the Punjab Police Intelligence Headquarters in Mohali. The big story that broke late Monday night right here on India Today. A rocket-propelled grenade was fired from the street, exploding and shattering glass and window panes on the third floor of this building. The Punjab's highly sensitive and highly protected building is also on the target of the anti-social elements though they have yet to be identified. Police has registered a fire against unidentified persons who are involved in this incident. meeting वो निकल रही है और गिरफ्तारियां कुछ हो भी गई हैं जिन्हें भी पंजाब का माहौल को खराब करने की कोशिश की थी वो बख्शा नहीं जाऊंगा सख्त तो सख्त सजा मिलेगी उन दिन कई पीढ़ियां याद रखेंगी इस केस को फेस करने के लिए 
हम लोग पूरे एफर्ट्स कर रहे हैं हमारे पास लीड हैं और जल्दी ही हम इस केस को सॉल्व कर लेंगे बैंड खालिस्तानी टेररिस्ट गुरपतवंत सिंह पन्नू वॉज क्विक टू क्लेम क्रेडिट एज ही सो ऑफन डज ऑन सोशल मीडिया सिविंग सेफली अब्रॉड इशूइंग अ थ्रेट दैर इट कुड बिन शिमला द पंजाब पुलिस टू इज नॉट रूलिंग आउट एनी टेरर एंगल National investigation agency teams are reaching the attack site to piece together evidence. Intelligence sources reveal Pakistan's Inter-Services Intelligence or ISI has been plotting a burn Punjab conspiracy. The Pakistan spy agency has reportedly launched a Lashkar-e-Khalsa terror outfit to rope in criminal elements and revive militancy and terrorism in the state. Is this another bid to disrupt long fought for peace in Punjab and do the state and center have a plan to defeat it With Manjeet Singh in Mohali and Arvind Ojha in Delhi Bureau Report India Today Punjab's chief minister Bhagwant Mann has claimed that the RPG attack in Mohali is an attempt to spoil the atmosphere in the state of Punjab Securing the border state is a big test for Mann who is now under fire from the BJP and the Congress who are calling the Punjab chief minister incompetent An explosion that shook the intelligence office of the Punjab police And with it brought the state's Aam Aadmi Party government under heavy political fire As investigators probed the RPG propelled grenade hit that caused no human injury in Mohali Punjab's ruling Aam Aadmi Party confronts opposition on slot. Chief Minister Bhagwant Mann is already being blamed for subservience to his party leader Arvind Kejriwal, a charge he stoutly denies. The Mohali blast delivered fresh ammunition to Congress to target the Mann government. Jab se Aam Aadmi Party ki Punjab mein sarkar rahi hai, katal ke cases mein vriddhi, Patiala mein dange. तरन तरन में आरडीएक्स का मिलना और अब पुलिस के ही दफ्तर पे हमला हो जाना ये बात दर्शाता है कि आम आदमी पार्टी केजरीवाल की जो पंजाब में सरकार है पंजाब की सुरक्षा अमन चैन के लिए हानिकारक है अब माननीय भगवंत मान जी को जाग जाना चाहिए उन्हें याद रखना चाहिए वो पंजाब के मुख्यमंत्री हैं केवल केजरीवाल के प्रचार मंत्री नहीं है देश के गृह मंत्री श्री अमित शाह जी से दरखास्त करूंगा कि सेंट्रल जांच एजेंसियों को जिम्मेदारी दी जाए मोहाली मामले की तय तक जाने के लिए उसकी जांच करने के लिए द बीजेपी टू कटंग इन चीक स्टॉन्स ऑन भगवंत मान एंड अरविंद केजरीवाल ये कह देना कि ये माइनर है भाई रॉकेट प्रपोलर से एक ग्रेनेड फेंका जाता है अरे इसको माइनर अटैक और मेजर अटैक आप इसको कैसे कहेंगे इससे बड़ा तो मुझे नहीं सकता कि अटैक हो सकता हो और पंजाब में कभी हुआ भी नहीं इस तरह का हम भगवंत मान जी के सपोर्ट में हैं हम चाहते हैं कि वो इस लड़ाई को लड़े लेकिन वो केजरीवाल जी को छोड़ें केजरीवाल जी की डिफरेंट प्रायोरिटीज हैं केजरीवाल जी की प्रायोरिटी पंजाब की नहीं है केजरीवाल जी की प्रायोरिटी सिख नहीं है अकाली चीफ सुखबीर सिंह बादल वॉन्ड द आम आदमी पार्टी गवर्नमेंट नॉट टू यूज द मोहाली एक्सप्लोजन एज अ प्रीटेक्स्ट टू स्टार्ट विच हंट ऑफ सी क्यूथ द रूलिंग आम आदमी पार्टी हैज फील्डेड its own army in defense the chief minister guaranteed swift action and prosecution kal raat jo mohali de vich ghatna hui hai main dgp sahab na sare intelligence de afsaran na meeting layi hai aur sara detail jehdi hai oh nikal rahi hai aur giraftariyan kuch ho vi gayi hain kuch ho jaan gayi hain te jada tak pahunch jange te main hi बार बार कहना चाहता हूं जरिए कि जिन्हें भी पंजाब का माहौल खराब करने की कोशिश की थी वो बख्शा नहीं जाऊगा सख्त तो सख्त सजा मिलेगी हिस पार्टी ब्रॉस कॉल द मोहाली एक्सप्लोजन एन अटेम्प्ट टू इनसाइट हेट्रिड इन पंजाब पंजाब में मोहाली ब्लास्ट नफरत फैलाने की और डर फैलाने की कोशिश है आम आदमी पार्टी की सरकार भगवंत मान जी की सरकार पंजाब का अमन चैन कायम करने के लिए पूरी तरीके से प्रतिबद्ध है और जो भी पंजाब का अमन चैन और शांति बिगाड़ने की कोशिश करेगा शांति भंग करने की कोशिश करेगा उसकी जगह जेल के सीचों के पीछे है 
Less than two months in office, the Aam Aadmi Party's first government in Punjab takes another test by fire over the Mohali blast after the Patiala clashes late last month. Bureau report, India Today. Is the Bhagwant Man government capable of uh, ensuring law and order in the state of Punjab? Both the BJP and the Congress are attacking the AAP government saying they are showing their incompetence. Uh, they are also completely new and incapable of bringing the situation under control. Joining me on this broadcast, representing the AAP, we have its spokesperson Ahab Singh Greval. Representing the Congress is Ashpreet Singh Khadiyal. Let me go across first to Ahab Greval. On the charges being leveled against the Bhagwant Man government, the three attacks on your watch in quick succession and the inability of the Punjab government and the police in the state to prevent these seems to suggest that Bhagwant Man, the new chief minister of the state, is struggling to try and ensure law in his state and on his watch. Uh, well, sir, first, a message for those who are trying to spoil uh, the atmosphere in Punjab, be it the ISI or the Khalistanis, bring it on. We are ready. Our father's generation fought against you 20, 30 years back. We are ready to fight you any way possible, number one. Number two, these, uh, these attacks and everything have shown that uh, the, 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 our neighbors, our not-so-friendly neighbors, are ready to create trouble whenever there's a whiff of any kind of uh, uh, any kind of division in our society. But unfortunately for them, and fortunately for us, Punjabi society is glued together. Punjabis, Hindus, and Sikhs got together, and we got rid of the Khalistanis, and we are still together. They might try a few things here and there. They tried something in Patiala. They they have tried this. They have thrown a challenge to us. And Punjab police, which finished the terrorist menaces Punjab is fully capable of fighting that. Thirdly, about the political attacks. The BJP should not say anything. Why? Because today, I just heard the news that Satish Tikur, the man murdered by Bitta Karate, his lawyer can't even go to Srinagar to fight his case after 31 years, after Article 370 abrogation, after everything. So they should, uh, after all the noise they've made about Kashmir files, they can't even get justice for one murdered Kashmiri Pandit. So that's that. As far as the Congress is concerned, the first time the troubles began in Punjab, we all know it was the trouble between Darbara Singh and Gyanis Ayal Singh which caused everything. But this time around, Punjab is a different Punjab. We are ready to face challenges and I would like to request them that please do not play politics over issues Ahab of national Singh security. Ahab Singh Aap says don't play politics over national security. Peace in Punjab is being challenged. Efforts being made by the ISI and Khalistani outfits to unsettle the new government. Let law and order deal with this. Don't try and blame the AAP government for something which is clearly not their fault. See, uh, first things first. Everyone has seen that ever since Amadmi Party took over Punjab, the law and order of Punjab has been in shambles. And Amadmi Party's Bhagwant Man Saab and the BJP are giving two contradictory statements. Uh, however, it, it is a known fact that the BJP apprises the same about every situation vis-a-vis -vis law and order. And despite that, if, was, if the statement is contradictory, that means either of the two, either the CM or the BJP is trying to lie to the people of Punjab and mislead them. And third, uh, the, the worst part is that police that is supposed to make the people safe and secure in Punjab is not feeling safe itself. They are being attacked and you know how, how, how can the people of Punjab feel safe in such a situation? Aam Aadmi Party has not been able to uh, avert any incidents. 50 days, 40 murders happened. Patiala International Kabaddi player gets killed. 50 shots per body. Patiala clash happens. Lati charges have been happening. IED gets recovered. And no inquiry is ordered. No inquiry at all whatsoever. However, they can initiate n number of inquiries against the previous governments for 150 jobs, 100 jobs, which are trivial issues. But something as big as this, they haven't done anything. And uh, you know what's very unfortunate is that the police is is not uh, you know being able to avert these kind of incidents because it's being sent to Delhi behind innocent people like Alka Lamba, Kumar Vishwas, Manjinder Sirsa, Tejinder Bagga. If the police would be here in Punjab, let Ahab Greval answer that be, question. That the government's act. priorities are wrong. You're more interested in arresting Tejinder Bagga than you are in yes, trying yes, to find out. 
who is responsible for these multiple attacks? Your government has flawed priorities. First of all, first of all, these are not trivial issues, number one. Anybody who has bled Punjab dry will be held to account, number one. Number two, number two, the thing here is, the question, the most important question is, the RDX was caught. We are busting modules. If you look at the, look at the data, the amount of uh, busts that have gone, the num number of terrorists or number of anti-social elements which have been caught in the past uh, three months, uh, two or two, two and a half months is record breaking. Number three, there's no contradiction. Mr. Mann says that, okay, we will make an example out of anybody who tries to do this and that DGP accepts the challenge on behalf of the Punjab police. Punjab police is made up of Punjabis, Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs and Christians. We defeated them once. We will not let these snakes raise their head ever again. If this is the matter, we are ready to make any sacrifice. And number three, we will, we will cooperate just like we cooperated with all central agencies to catch, catch that, uh, that RDX which was caught in uh, Karnal finally and which was being tracked from the border with, uh, with input from the intelligence agencies. We will do everything in our power and Punjab police is fully, fully, fully capable, Mr. Kam uh, sir, that we will make sure, make sure that these people are brought to book and they will be made examples out of just like the people in Patiala who tried to disturb the peace are today have been made examples of. These people will be caught. They will be made examples out of. And if the ISI and Pakistan uh, and those Khalistanis want to throw a challenge at us, challenge accepted. We will fight you to Thanne. So respond to that, Ashpreet Khadiyal, that this is a challenge being thrown by the Khalistanis and the ISI at India. It's not about AAP, it's not about Congress, it's not about the BJP. This is the Khalistani factions versus India and that's how we must respond rather than try and pin blame on each other. Definitely, but has Ahmadi Party said anything about the statement given by Mr. Pannu? He, he categorically said that I take responsibility for this act. And he also said, he also issued another threat that I'm going to do something on this sort again in Himachal Pradesh. What has the Amadi Party government done about this? Nothing at all. However, no, but what can they do? Pannu is sitting in right the there. United States, largely in New York. Uh, it's the central government, if at all, that is to put pressure on the government in the United States to try and act against him. How are you expecting Kejriwal to do that? Right, I'll tell you how. Uh, Mr. Man is the CM of Punjab. He could have a meeting with the Home Minister of India, Mr. Shah. He could at least brief him about these issues. He could tell him that these are the state of affairs in Punjab and people are not feeling safe. They can't get out. And the worst of all, if the quickness that they showed in the case of Kejriwal Saab's defamation, you know, uh, the number of times police went there and how quickly they went to the, to the house of Mr. Bagga, they quickly went to the court. If that kind of quickness had been show, shown, you know, in, in, these, in these circumstances, we would have been able to avert it. And not just this incident, but so many more incidents would have been averted. But our army party's priorities are clearly different. And I'll tell you how bad the law and order situation in Punjab is. Because Mr. Maan is in sometimes Delhi, in sometimes Himachal Pradesh, in Gujarat. The governor of Punjab had to go to six border districts to assess, you know, that the amount of drugs coming, drones coming, arms coming, ammunition coming is way too much. Something has to be done about that. And you also said that we bring about a policy named Agnipat in order to help these border districts, which is the job of the government. But since the government isn't doing anything, the governor had to intervene. Now, third, Aam Army Party said that the CM and DGP didn't give any contradictory statement. Mr. Mahan said that a person has been arrested. The, G the, the DGP said no person was arrested at all whatsoever. That was the contradiction there and then. And fourth, uh, Aam Army Party has... has May, may I just complete, man, I just have one more point to make. Okay, go on quickly, please. Right. The last thing is that, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the peace and, you know, the peace of Punjab is the priority for the people of Punjab. And every time when an incident of this kind happens, Mr. Man would look at Delhi. The police also understands it and sees it very clearly that he's not the real boss. The super CM of Punjab is Mr. Kejriwal. He's the one who's supposed to give us orders. That's why, you know, uh, it's so tense here and the police hasn't been able to do its job. They haven't been able to be vigilant on their toes despite so many incidents being happening. Because okay, a, so you uh, made that point. Crime. Final, so wine, fi final words, Ahab Grewal. You know, here's the concern. When Bhagwant Man took over, people were worried that he's a newbie to governance. He's a great comedian, good orator, 
but doesn't have the depth of grasp over the administrative machinery. He has to look over his shoulders, see what Kejriwal and Delhi want and therefore the administration under him isn't being able to respond efficaciously and that's the problem. Uh, well, the accusations that they, these accusations come from WhatsApp University, I would not want to answer them. Number one. Number two. Number two. More importantly, what is important is just look at the way the, the double standards. The Congress says the governor had to go. He had to do in any other state. They will they will be screaming from rooftops that this is an affront to federalism. Number three. I would like to reiterate the fact that Mr. Bhagwantman has come in with a new whiff of air. All the problems. Look. The nexus, the drugs nexus, the gangster nexus is what we have inherited. Yes, there will be a backlash. When a new government comes, there will be a backlash and we will fight that backlash. We rest assured, we will not allow these people to spoil the atmosphere in Punjab and this politico uh, terrorist narco nexus which was formed in Punjab will be broken. We will break their backs. And again, again and again, I would like to reiterate any Khalistani any SJF, any Pannu. First of all, Pannu is a non-entity in Punjab. Nobody cares about him. But if you are throwing a challenge to us, bring it on. We will send you to hell where you belong. That's an assurance from... Ahab Greval, Ashpreet Khadiyal, what's happening is deeply disconcerting. Uh, in the interest of the nation and in the state of Punjab, it is imperative that the new AAP government try and catch the perpetrators who are trying to destabilize Punjab. We'll continue tracking the story because Punjab has seen six major mobilizations in the last 10 years, from the farmer agitation to Deep Sidhu's death. Uh, are the protests a sign of growing disaffection with the community leadership? Here's a report. India's most sustained agricultural agitation. The protest led by the Sikh farmers of Punjab. Farmer protests which ended last year after the government withdrew the farm laws was one in a series of half a dozen mass mobilizations of the Sikhs in a decade. That agitation wasn't driven by religious reasons, but the other five carried strong religious sentiments. A Punjabi actor at the center of the unfurling of the Sikh religious flag at the Red Fort on Republic Day last year. His death in an accident in February this year galvanized the community once again. His final prayers drew a groundswell of crowds. A massive protest in Punjab's Faridkot district over the sacrilege of the Guru Granth Sahib lasted six months in 2018. A controversial conclave called the Sarbat Khalsa at a village in Amritsar district in November 2015 over the sacrilege also witnessed a huge turnout. And so did a Sikh activist's hunger strike in 2013 for the release of six Sikh men jailed since the 1990s during militancy in Punjab. In 2012, Punjab saw a mammoth Sikh protest over the impending execution of a Sikh prisoner convicted in the Bain Singh assassination case. Political veterans in Punjab described the Sikh mobilizations as a sign of disaffection with the community leadership. The Sikh base was eroded over a period of time and now after the last two elections we see that uh, there's a lot of disenchantment with the traditional Sikh leadership and uh, somehow people have uh, lost their um, faith in them. Kiran Jodh Kaur, however, rejected the notions that Sikh protests signal potential unrest. Khalistan is one issue that is used by vested interests whenever there is an election. So we never heard about anything uh, uh, happening about Khalistan in Himachal, but today there are news emanating from uh, Himachal that there are Khalistanis there. A 72% turnout in the 2022 elections bears testimony to the well-entrenched democratic process in this border state. A collective responsibility of its political establishment to maintain Punjab's hard-earned peace. With Harmeet Shah Singh, Bureau Report, India Today.
You're on board the new track. Sri Lanka is descending deeper into chaos. The country's administration has now issued shoot site orders to quell protests. Reports suggest that former Prime Minister Mahindra Raj Pakse has fled after his ancestral home was set on fire by an angry mob. Lanka is in flames. Violent protests rocking the picturesque island nation. Super luxury cars vandalized and burnt in arson attacks. Plush residences of top politicians set on fire in unprecedented display of public fury. The Indian Ocean nation grappling with its worst ever economic crisis is now on the brink of a full-blown civil war. Homes of several sitting and former ministers, members of parliament and mayors have been set on fire by protesters, angry over economic hardship, chronic shortage of essential items and runaway inflation. The House of Sri Lanka's former Prime Minister, Mahinda Rajapaksa, who resigned on Monday, was also set ablaze. Protests were staged over acute shortages of fuel and electricity, along with skyrocketing prices of essential commodities. Dramatic images of Chopper reportedly evacuating members of ruling party from a stadium surfaced. Former Prime Minister Rajapaksa too left his official residence, Temple Trees, early on Tuesday after military cleared out protesters. The government imposed a nationwide curfew till Wednesday. Anti-government protesters lined up the streets leading to the international airport to block any ministers leaving the country. Speaking to India Today exclusively, former Sri Lankan cabinet minister and cricket captain Arjuna Ranatunga blamed the Rajapaksas. They allowed them to walk towards them. I think it was a highly planned thing and I, I blame the police, I blame the forces. They should have easily stopped this thing. This entire thing was planned by most probably the government but supported by the police and the, uh, the forces as well. At least seven people, including an MP, have died in the flare-up and hundreds have been injured. With Ruksana Rizvi in Colombo and Ashutosh Mishra in Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. Ruksana Rizvi has been contributing to India Today's coverage of the crisis in Sri Lanka, joining us now live uh, from Colombo. Uh, Ruksana, can you give our viewers a sense of the situation at present? Because some of these pictures we see are hugely dramatic. Is the problem widespread across Colombo? Is it concentrated in pockets? Uh, no, it's actually quite widespread. Even this earlier this evening when I was uh, traveling to uh, the, uh, the poll phase where the president's secretary is located, there were quite a lot of number of people there. And ordinarily during curfew, you're not supposed to be outdoors. But here you find people just congregating in large numbers to protest. There's a massive public outcry. And the situation is quite dire. There are so many um, houses of um, ruling members of parliament that are being set ablaze, uh, personal property, uh, businesses belonging to them. So it's still continuing. Of course, there's been a, a less incidents reported today, but it's still very much happening even now as we speak. So Sri Lanka has been mired in a deep political and economic crisis for the past two months. The island nation of 22 million people is experiencing acute shortages of food, fuel and other essentials. A crisis that has inflicted widespread misery and triggered weeks of mass protests. Here's how the country spiraled into chaos. Sri Lanka in flames. This is how the crisis unfolded. March the 31st. This is when the crisis truly begins, when hundreds of protesters tried to storm the home of the Lankan president Gotabaya Rajapaksa, demanding his resignation. April the 1st, as the protests spread over the crippling economic crisis, Gotabaya declares a state of emergency, giving security forces sweeping powers to arrest and detain miscreants.
April the 3rd. Almost all of Sri Lanka's cabinet resigns, leaving President Gotabaya and his brother Mahinda, the then Prime Minister, isolated. April the 4th. Gotabaya's peace offer to the opposition is rebuffed. The president had offered to share power with the opposition under a unity administration led by then Prime Minister Mahinda. April the 5th. But this was just the beginning of the president's problems. The embattled leader lost his parliamentary majority as former allies urged him to quit. He lifted the state of emergency after seven days in Sri Lanka. April the 9th, tens of thousands of protesters marched against the beleaguered president, reiterating their demand for his resignation, the biggest protest to date. April the 12th, Sri Lanka announced it is defaulting on its entire external debt of 51 billion US dollars. The island nation had earlier run out of foreign exchange to import desperately needed everyday goods. April the 18th, the president unveiled a new cabinet, ousting two of his brothers and a nephew, but clinging on to his eldest brother Mahinda as Prime Minister. April the 19th, the police kill one protester, the first casualty after several weeks of anti-government protests. April the 28th, a general strike brings the crippled country to a total standstill. May the 6th, thousands of shops, schools and businesses close as public and private sector workers go on strike. Gotabaya declares emergency for the second time in over a month. May the 9th, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa resigns to make way for a unity government. But things spiral out of control. At least five people are killed in clashes in Colombo, including a ruling party member of parliament. Authorities announce a nationwide curfew once again. We'll keep tracking the crisis in Sri Lanka very closely here on India Today, but let's move on to some other stories. There was high drama outside the Kutub Minar in Delhi after VHP workers descended on the monument to demand that the name be changed to Vishnu Stam. They chanted the Hanuman Chalisa in protest. This even as the Delhi BJP is demanding that all Mughal names of roads in the capital be changed. Delhi's Kutub Minar echoing with the chants of Jai Sri Ram and recital of Hanuman Chalisa. After simmering loudspeaker Rao, now saffron groups are focusing on renaming historical sites which they claim have distinct Hindu roots. The protesters want Kutub Minar to be renamed as Vishnu Stamb claiming the original structure by Hindu kings was raised. And several Hindu deities, temples and structures are buried under Kutub Minar. Many of the protesters were detained. Sanatan Bhumi rahi hai, Sanatan Bhumi hi rahega, aur Mughalon ne hamare har cheech ko chheena hai, to wo hum wapas ki maang kar rahe hai, Kutub Minar naam hata ke, aur uska naam tel hata ke, hum apna naam tel jo pahle tha, the protest that you see behind me, the saffron flags that you are seeing being raised very close to the Kutub Minar, just 500 meters from the iconic monument. Chants are being raised to rename Kutub Minar as Vishnu. Some banners have been put up. <laughs> उसको विष्णु स्तम घोषित किया जाए उसके अंदर जो नीचे मूर्तियां दबी हुई हैं उन मूर्तियों को निकाला जाए जो अंदर खंडित मूर्तियां हैं उन मूर्तियों को भी विधिवत रूप से हिंदू मूर्तियों को साबित किया जाए The BJP meanwhile came out with its own version of Mughal purge 
Its Delhi chief wrote to civic body and DMC seeking renaming of various roads which carry names of Mughal rulers. BJP said the atrocities by Mughal rulers have been masked and roads should be renamed after Hindu and Sikh icons. आज हमने जो पत्र लिखा है उसमें हमने मांग की कि औरंगजेब रोड जिसका नाम पहले से ही डॉक्टर एपीजे अब्दुल कलाम रोड रख दिया गया है औरंगजेब लेन जो बची हुई है उसका नाम डॉक्टर एपीजे अब्दुल कलाम लेन होना चाहिए ऐसे करके हमने एक महर्षि वाल्मीकि खुदीराम बोस और जिन्होंने हमारे जो अभी जनरल हुए बिपिन रावत उनके नाम पर भी एक सड़क का नाम इस लुटियन जोन के अंदर रखा जाए ताकि आने वाली पीढ़ियां और ये जनरेशन भारत को भारत के वीरों से जाने न कि विदेशी आक्रांताओं से जाने द रीनेमिंग पुश एंड बिट टू रिमूव मुगल नेम्स इन कैपिटल ओपनिंग अ फ्रेश चैप्टर ऑफ क्लैश ओवर हिस्ट्री विद ऐश्वर्या पालीवाल एंड कुमार कुनाल इन डेली ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टूडे Meanwhile, the Taj Mahal is back in the headlines after a BJP Neta demanded that 22 rooms be opened and checked for Hindu idols. But the monument is also getting much higher level attention. On Tuesday, Tesla CEO Elon Musk recalled his 2007 trip to the Taj Mahal, which he described as truly a wonder of the world. Here's a report. One of the seven wonders of the world, a monument to love. that needs no introduction a symbol of mughal splendor that is india's most visited historical edifice the taj mahal has never needed more than the global spotlight it already enjoys but this week shah jahan's marvel in marble is back in the headlines big time it started over the weekend with a petition in the allahabad high court seeking a fact finding inquiry into the history of the taj mahal requesting that its 22 closed rooms be opened to check if hindu idols are hidden inside them the petition filed by a member of bjp's ayodhya unit was deferred on tuesday but elsewhere in the world the taj mahal was getting some much higher level attention the world's richest man elon musk was busy tweeting about the taj mahal noting that it was amazing and a true wonder of the world The tweet set off massive buzz on Indian Twitter over whether another trip to India is on Musk's cards. But the billionaire chatter on the Taj Mahal didn't end there, with Elon's mother May Musk replying to him and recalling Elon's grandparents who visited the Taj Mahal in a flight that made some aviation history at the time. Elon's mother then topped it off with a picture of herself at the Taj from a trip 10 years ago. The slew of gushing tweets about India's monument of love have gone super viral on Twitter, giving the Taj Mahal an unexpected place in international headlines at a time when an Indian high court will decide whether to open doors of the monument that have always been shut. To be sure, the current petition on the Taj Mahal is based on persistent claims by certain Hindu groups that the Taj Mahal was originally Tejo Mahal, an ancient Shiva temple. the latest in the collision of faith and history that seeing due process based missions in other parts of the country most recently in kashi's gyanvyapi mosque complex one thing's for sure the taj mahal has the world's eyes on it bureau report india today Some of these debates about renaming monuments are completely pointless. There's so many real challenges here and now, and that's where our energy must be concentrated rather than raising these issues from the past. The loudspeaker debate is getting louder. After UP and Maharashtra, it's now echoing in Karnataka. The Bombay government has issued a 15-day ultimatum to all institutions to comply with the Supreme Court guidelines on noise limits. Karnataka government's new ultimatum Chief Minister Bommai issues notice to pull down unauthorized speakers from religious places within 15 days Yes the loud speaker row which sparked off in Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh is now echoing in Karnataka
after Hindu right-wing group Sri Ram Sene pushed the BJP government to show some guts like Yogi did in Uttar Pradesh and crack down on loudspeakers at mosques, the Burmai government has quickly responded with a notice. The chief minister held a meeting with senior officers in Bengaluru and decided that a 15-day deadline be given to pull down all illegal loudspeakers and bring down decibel levels of those with permissions in place. We are sure that law and order will not be disturbed and law and order will not be given into the hands of miscreants who are trying to disturb Karnataka's harmony. Sri Ram Sene on Monday had launched protests across several temples in Bengaluru, Mysuru, Mandya, Bengam, Dharwad and Kalaburgi. They played the Hanuman Chalisa on temple loudspeakers, following which Bengaluru police stormed in to detain a few. Karnataka Congress calls this move an election gimmick orchestrated by the BJP. Since elections are going to take place next year, you can be sure that one more issue is now going to crop up and uh, that is also going to be a communal one. So uh, after the end of the Azan issue, there is going to be some other thing which is going to uh, try to keep the communal divide active uh, and uh, this is in the run-up to elections in 2023. Karnataka government though remains firm on the order. Instructions have been given to take strict legal action against those who do not comply with the Supreme Court mandated loudspeaker guidelines. Bureau Report, India Today.